Steel Meridian is known for selling some very powerful weapons, among them the Vagor Murloc. Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this mastery rank 10 secondary weapon, the Vagor Murloc. I'm gonna be covering a cheap build, something affordable that anybody can build, but of course we also have the classic, well, end game setup with a Riven. That being said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually follow a more new player friendly approach, simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So if you're a veteran of the game and already know most of this stuff, then please, have a little patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Vaycor. Murloc. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped and for that I'm simply gonna be taking a couple of free shots. You'll notice that the Vacor Murloc is a semi-automatic pistol with well not that great of an accuracy unfortunately. It has 10 which is nowhere near Lex Prime level of 16. It also has quite the recoil on it. It tends to favor the upper right hand side of the screen so you kinda gotta get used to that. 10 shots in a clip and if you take a look at my ammo now you will notice a very interesting symbol. This is a syndicate weapon and it will have the justice effect. Upon gaining 1000 affinity you will release a 25 meter radius blast that will deal 1000 blast damage and stagger enemies. It will also refund 25% of your maximum health and give you a base armor boost of 15% for the duration of 30 seconds. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with. First of all, mod capacity is 60 out of 60, and if your Murloc only has 30 out of 30, then jump into actions and install an Auto King Catalyst. This one can be found from alerts, invasions, or if you're lucky, from the daily sortie. They usually pop up after dev streams, and there's no way to consistently farm them. They cost 20 plat each, so definitely keep an eye out for these. Next, my weapon has been formatted a total of 5 times, but for the weapon builds I'm recommending you guys, free forma will do it. By default the Vacor Murloc does come with one polarity, it's gonna be a Vazarin in the lower right hand side of the mods. Now I changed this one to a V and you can do that as well, just simply change the Vazarin to a V or mod right and add 2 more Vs and that should do it for the forma. Accuracy is 10 and as you saw there in practice, it's not very accurate but it'll do the job nicely. Critical chance is decent at best at 20% and the multi is low at 1.5x. Fire rate of 2.0 with a magazine of 10 and a reload of 1.7. You will be getting some downtime out of the Vacor Murloc so investing into some reload speed would not be a bad idea. Riven Disposition, only 1 out of 5, that means that the Vacor Murloc and the Murloc family in general is quite popular. Status chance 35% and this is where the weapon shines. Next we're gonna talk about the default damage or the IPS. You got Impact, Puncture and Slash, highest amount by far will be Impact, which is probably the biggest drawback to the weapon. Currently in Warframe, Impact is not seen as being the best physical type. Slash is second with 48 and Puncture will be lowest at 16. Let's start slapping on some mods and we're gonna talk more about IPS a bit later. Hornet Strike, mandatory and of course we're gonna start off with the mandatory mods. 220% extra damage. Next we're gonna go into multi shot. this is the best thing on mostly everything so slap on as much as you can. Barrel Diffusion with 120% multi shot as well as Lethal Torrent with 60% multi shot and 60% fire rate. Now in the case of Lethal Torrent the fire rate considering the recoil and everything is kinda a bit counterproductive. This one is here simply because of the multi shot. These two together will give us 180% multi shot which means we have a guaranteed second bullet with each and every shot and we also have an 80% chance per shot at a third bullet. Next we're gonna go into crit chance and crit damage. This is a status weapon, let me get that out of the way, but it's still worth investing into crit chance, crit damage, then going further into status chance. So keep that one in mind. Pistol Gambit will give us 120% crit chance and our crit chance goes to 44% and of course crit chance is nothing without crit damage. Target Cracker is a tad underpowered, if you guys have prime versions then by all means go for prime versions. Crit Multi at 2.4x. Next we really gotta decide what we're gonna do with the weapon. There's basically two approaches to the Vagor Murloc. You can go for a flat out elemental build or you can go for a slash build. Both of these are viable and I'm gonna showcase both. First. We're gonna talk about uh, adding elemental damage to a weapon. This should be slapped on depending on the encounter. For example, if you're going up against the infested, these guys have 4 health types, each with their own unique vulnerabilities and resistances to damage and you can check that info out on the wiki. Against infested, I usually recommend going into AoE weapons modded into heat. That is usually a kind of a decent compromise. 
Against Corpus Faction you can build magnetic damage which will deal extra damage to their shields, but a smarter approach can be to build gas or toxin which will bypass their shields entirely and deal damage to their health. Just keep in mind that some Corpus units have armor underneath their shields, so also keep that one in mind. Currently in Warframe the Grenier are seen and are the toughest targets around and they have two armor types, Alloy and Ferrite. Ferrite is weak to corrosive damage and Alloy is weak to radiation damage. Against Grenier, in general your best bet is to build corrosive damage, which is the elemental combo between electricity and toxin. So let's slap some of it on. First off, electricity. Jolt unfortunately is not farmable from anywhere in game. This one is brought by Barokitir, the Void Trader. I recommend you pick one up or even multiple so you can sell some later on for a bit of a profit. Currently on PC this one is going between 50 and 100 plat, by all intents and purposes check Warframe Market for more appropriate prices. This is the only pricey mod on the build but there is an option to it. Next we're gonna go into Toxin. Pistol Pestilence, this one is a whole lot more accessible, farmable from Corrupted Vore in the Void, from the trade chat 10 to 15 plat, on an absolute max. Now you wanna get all the 60-60 mods in Warframe, maybe not the Arcwing ones, because you will need them for a lot of builds. Now I got my Corrosive at 1720. Let's pause for a second and talk about how status procs work in Warframe, specifically proc priority. You probably already know that the value of each and every element will determine its order on the proc picking order. However, Impact, Puncture and Slash have a 4 times greater chance of proccing over elemental types such as Corrosive. So when you're trying to figure out what exactly will proc first or what is the proc uh, priority, then multiply the Impact, Puncture and Slash times 4, just so you can see exactly what would be the order. So my Impact is not 860, it's 3400 and something, in fact higher than the corrosive. So in this case the proc priority is impact slash and corrosive and finally puncture. So keep that one in mind. If you're building a weapon for status like kind of we are doing now you need to keep in mind that the IPS has a much greater chance to proc than elemental types. Now your final mod slot on the weapon is what I like to call an option slot. When you're taking into account the Vakor Murloc's ugly recoil, then Steady Hands is a viable option. Steady Hands will reduce the recoil by 60%, which will allow you to get more consistent shots. Totally up to you. A lot of players, for example, enjoy Punch Through. Seeker, 2.1 meters worth of punch through, which means that my bullets will go through the initial target and keep traveling for 2.1 meters. In Warframe, you're gonna make a lot of use out of punch through. It is a tad situational at times, but going for punch through is never really a bad idea. So keep that one in mind. Another thing I can do is further increase my elemental combo. As we talked about earlier, my corrosive right now doesn't have the best chance of proccing, so I can add more electricity or more toxin to the weapon to further increase the corrosive value. Now it's still not gonna be as high as the impact, but it's gonna have a larger chance to proc and this is pretty much what I'm after. We're gonna be spawning in Corrupted Heavy Gunner level 120 and see what the Vakor Murloc is capable of. Now I can go rapid fire or I can go shot by shot. Initially I'm gonna go shot by shot just to make sure I land all the bullets and then we're gonna go for rapid fire. As you can see I'm getting plenty of status apps on the target. I get impact procs, I get slash procs and of course I get uh, a good amount of corrosive procs as well. And this is pretty much what the weapon can do. As you saw there when it crits it is beautiful isn't it? And this would be rapid fire. Now the recoil is hard to control, not completely impossible and I don't enjoy fighting my mouse but you can forget about steady hands if you feel tough and all whatnot. I usually play with steady hands more often than not because I do want my shots to count so keep that one in mind. As you can see the Vaker Murloc is capable of tearing through some really high level targets quite quickly. It's gonna really depend on how many status procs you get on your targets but this is not the only option when it comes to the Murloc. Next we're gonna try a bleed build with a lot of slash. Firstly we're gonna get rid of all the electricity on the weapon as we no longer need it. Next we're gonna increase the weapon slash value with maim, 120% extra. This means that my slash value will be higher than the impact, therefore first on the proc pecking order. When you're building a weapon for slash and bleeds it's a smart idea to build viral damage. Viral will reduce the maximum health of a target to 50% for the duration of the status proc, so in a way your slashes will be dealing double damage. Viral is the elemental combo between toxin and cold. And again we're gonna go for the 60-60 mod frostbite. Now you want to go for the 60s not the 90s not because you want more status apps of the viral because you want more status apps of the slash so keep that one in mind. 
This is gonna be the second build we're gonna be testing and we're gonna be spawning in the exact same targets as before. With a slash build, what I recommend you guys doing is hitting a target till about 50% health, then let the slashes, let the bleeds do the magic. So this is precisely what we're gonna do. You're gonna see some nice slashes on the target. Look at that, 1700 plus, that is a crit slash. And of course the viral is working its magic as well. This is not entirely consistent simply because the impact has a tendency to get in the way. And when you're proccing impact, basically you're not winning. So there is that. In order to make this build truly shine, you're gonna need a Riven with minus impact. It doesn't even need to have plus slash, though that would be ideal. But minus impact just to get the impact out of the status proc running. So there is that to take into account. But as you can see, it can definitely be efficient, especially if it crits. You can build a Vakor Murloc such as this if you enjoy playing more into Slash. I, however, feel that the uh, corrosive build is a bit more efficient, so keep that one in mind. Now, when it comes to Dispo 1 weapons like the Vakor Murloc, I honestly do not recommend Riven, simply because they're not very impactful, but I do have a Riven to show to you guys, and this one has damage and crit chance. Now, take a look at the values on this one. Only 100% extra damage when Hornet Strike gives you 220, and 81.5 crit chance when the normal version of, uh, what's it called, Pistol Gambit gives you 120. This is the problem with Dispo 1 weapons. Now, if this one had a negative, it would have been a bit better, but still, don't go out of your way to get Rivens for Dispo 1 weapons. By all intents and purposes, they're simply not that efficient. And as you can see, this is a corrosive setup with Convulsion and Pistol Pestilence. Once again, 160, 60 mod, 190 mod, because I do want a decent value out of that corrosive. Then again, I don't want to drop too much status chance either, because then it's going to be counterproductive. We're going to be respawning the exact same targets once again, and of course, we're going to see what the weapon is capable of with a Riven. Now, it is a little bit better with a Riven, but again, it's a Dispo 1, so the difference isn't going to be huge. I don't recommend you spending hundreds of plat on a Murloc Riven currently. If the Dispo was to go up, then definitely go for it. Other than that, you can get a Murloc Riven unrolled for about 20 plat, head on over to Kuva and see if you guys can get a negative impact. That would honestly be a blessing for this weapon, and that's pretty much what the weapon can do with a Riven. One more test, we're gonna amp up everything with Warframe buffs and for that I'm gonna need my weapon specialist Lady Mirage Prime and we're gonna check out what kind of buffs she's got. First of all, Pistol Lamp, 27% extra damage to pistols, this is an aura so everybody in your party will be receiving this benefit and it is stackable times 4. Up against Grenier, normally Corrosive Projection will give you better results, however, Pistol Lamp will grant its benefit regardless of the target. When it comes to Arcanes, you do have a bit of an option. First of all, Arcane Precision is the best option. On Headshot, 80% chance for plus 120% damage to pistols for 8 seconds. Farmable from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. I think the R3 is going for about 120 plat on PC. Once again, check Warframe Market. As for our second Arcane, you do have a bit of an option. You can go for, where are you? Arcane Awakening. On reload, 40% chance for plus 100% damage to pistols for 16 seconds. Now, this one is an unreload effect, so it's not entirely reliable, but you are gonna be getting some uptime out of this one, and it's a lot cheaper as well. On the uh, trade chat, you can find the R3 for about 30 to 40 plat. I do not recommend Arcane Velocity on critical hit fire rate. This one, without mitigating that recoil or without Without increasing the magazine size is not necessarily the best idea. What you can go for is Arcane Avenger. 14% chance for 30% critical chance for 8 seconds. This is an undamaged effect, but more importantly, this is an additive after bonus, meaning it's gonna add after everything. With this one on and Prime Pistol Gambit, I'm gonna be getting over 100% crit chance out of the Vakor Murloc. And this is what I'm recommending to you guys as well. And of course, I'm gonna need these guys to hit me, so we're gonna kill off the remnants, unpause the AI and simulate. Activate Mirage's third ability for a massive damage increase, and the clones as well. And we're gonna go for flat headshots. Look at that impact proc, goddamn impact. Just a couple of shots and I'm able to take out one of these high-level targets, but again, this is with some heavy-duty Warframe buffs. And now, as long as I have Arcane Avenger up, all of my shots will be critting. So there you go. Boom, boom. There's no question that the Vakor Murloc can pack one serious punch, but it does have some ugly drawbacks to it as well. Let's keep in mind that it's a status weapon, but it's primarily an impact weapon. Low Riven disposition as well, and that ugly recoil. Those are the negatives, but you cannot deny that the Murloc packs one serious wallop. 
As always, my name is Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you have any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon review, then by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. I can't realistically promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week, but I will be reading through each and every comment. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.